Welcome to Sunday Morning Devotional and Bible Study, brought to you by Bay Branch Primitive Baptist Church, located at 393 Bay Branch Church Road in Claxton, Georgia. Now here's our speaker, V. Vernon Eckleberry, with today's message. Greetings. The title of our lesson is The Rainbow Cradle. And I'll begin by reading just a few passages from Matthew chapter 2 that pertain to the arrival of the wise men and the star that they saw. Verse 1, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And then verses 9 and 10. This is after their time with Herod. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. And when they were come into the house, They saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. We'll begin with two cradles. At the beginning of this present era, a baby was born to an upper echelon family in Cordoba, Spain. The father was famous in Rome and the mother well-placed in society. The home was a beautiful, spacious dwelling with typical Spanish design and decor. The baby lay in a well-crafted cradle decorated with colorful trappings. He lay snuggled on soft, velvety sheets supported by a comfortable feather mattress. The nursery was bright and cheerful and colorful. The baby's name was Lucius Aeneas Seneca. He was destined to become a famous Roman philosopher, statesman, orator, and writer. Meanwhile, three and a half thousand miles away, another baby was born. His nursery was a stable, his cradle a manger, a feeding trough for cattle. He wouldn't feel the prickly straw, though, because he was bound, that is, swaddled securely in cloth, perhaps cut from other garments. In the surprising, brilliant light from above, a mother can be seen serenely watching her child. The father stood by his side, but he was not the paternal father. The child was the Son of God. Secondly, we'll look at two stars. To the eyes of his father and millions of believers in the century since, that makeshift cradle was anything but drab. Therein lay the one long ago prophesied of by one Balaam, as recorded in Numbers 25 or 24, 17, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star, out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. John announced his arrival as that true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And Jesus would describe himself in Revelation 22, 16 as the bright and morning star. That's what God sees when he looked at the manger in Bethlehem, a star destined to be the light of the world. Also above the manger, a supernatural star shone like a beacon, marking the place where Jesus lay. The wise men visiting from the far east would identify it as his star. We hear the phrase, his star is rising, referring to one who is climbing up the ladder of success. Well, never a star rose like that of the Christ child that lay in a manger. Thirdly, we'll look at two rainbows. 
Have you ever observed a star in the sky twinkling, as it were? If you look closely, it flashes all of the colors of the light spectrum. Light entering into our world through our atmosphere is broken down into all of its colors. Like the colors of a rainbow when light passes through the particles of water left after a rain. Well, the first rainbow was seen after the first rain in the time of Noah. After the rain, God put a rainbow in the sky to signify the promise that the flood would never happen again that covered the entire world. In Genesis 9 verse 11 we read, God said, I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall any more be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. So God put the rainbow in the sky as a token that forever his promise, his covenant would be kept. And whenever we see the rainbow, we are reminded that the earth will never again be destroyed as it was in the time of Noah. But there's another rainbow that serves as a reminder of God's eternal covenant with his people, the covenant of grace, if you will. In heaven, the light of our Savior is seen broken up into a rainbow of color. This is the way Ezekiel records it in Ezekiel chapter 1, beginning at verse 27. And I saw the color of amber as the appearance of fire round about within it, and from the appearance of his loins even upward and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and it had a brightness round about. This is a description now of Jesus in glory. And Ezekiel continues, As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so it was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord, who we know is our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, John the Apostle also saw Christ in heaven, saw him enthroned, and not without the rainbow of promise. And immediately I was in the Spirit, John wrote, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. The rainbow reveals the many facets of light, and the spiritual rainbow that surrounds Christ reveals his many facets as well. For instance, blue represents the skies above. Blue represents heaven where Christ abides, from which he came and to which he returned and from which he will come again. And then there's purple, which represents royalty, the kingly colors representing Christ as King of kings and Lord of lords. Then in that rainbow surrounding Christ, there is white. This is where the colors converge, and white reminds us of the pure, sin-free body of our Savior. Then there's the scarlet, red, which portrays death, the shedding of our Savior's blood 
on the cross at Calvary. Then there's black. Although black isn't a color, it represents that awful three hours that Jesus experienced when the earth was shrouded in darkness. The earth turned black. There was no light. There was no rainbow. But also on the bright side, there is yellow, the golden color. And this speaks to the value attached to the redeeming price that Jesus paid for us, although it's greater than silver and gold. Those are the colors of the light of the world that we see not through droplets of rain in the atmosphere, but through the eyes of faith. Fifthly, we look at brightness all around. The cradle of Seneca and other well-born babies was beautiful and colorful, but the cradle in the manger bathed in divine light from within and supernatural light from above was like a rainbow of color a rainbow cradle. Ezekiel saw it, brightness round about him, giving the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. Now, may God be with you till we meet again.